Hello, I'm Shauna Lawhorn with the League of Women Voters. Along with the League and SFGov TV, I'm here to discuss Proposition H, a ballot measure that will be before the voters on Tuesday, November 8th. The city currently does not have a particular official or central office responsible for overseeing how city departments interact with the public. Some city offices provide opportunities for the public to obtain information, report problems, or submit service requests. Currently, the controller is the city's chief accounting officer and auditor. The controller monitors the level and effectiveness of city services. The controller also oversees the city's whistleblower program, which receives and investigates confidential complaints regarding misuse of city funds and improper activities by city officers and employees. The city's Office of Citizen Complaints investigates complaints of misconduct and neglect of duty by police officers and may file disciplinary charges against officers. Proposition H is a charter amendment that would create the position of public advocate. The public advocate would be elected at a citywide election and serve a four-year term. Under Proposition H, the public advocate would investigate and attempt to resolve complaints from members of the public concerning city services and programs, receive and investigate some confidential whistleblower complaints concerning city services and programs, review the administration of city programs, management practices, and contracting procedures, and make recommendations to improve them, and appoint a director of the Office of Citizen Complaints or its successor from nominees selected by the Police Commission subject to the Board of Supervisors' approval. The controller would continue to handle whistleblower complaints regarding misuse of city funds. Proposition H would also make it city policy to provide the public advocate with sufficient funding and a support staff of at least 25 people. The public advocate may also hire independent experts who could be exempt from some of the city's contracting rules. A yes vote means you want to amend the charter to create the position of public advocate responsible for investigating and attempting to resolve public complaints concerning city services and programs. A no vote means you do not want to make these changes. I'm here with John Gollinger from the Yes on H campaign and a proponent of Proposition H. We're also joined by Marcy Berry from the San Francisco Libertarian Party and an opponent of the measure. Thank you both for being here. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you. I'd like to start with some opening remarks, and we're going to go ahead and start with you, John. Sure. Well, I'm here today to urge voters to vote yes on Prop H. Prop H would create the Office of Public Advocate. Public Advocate is an independent watchdog with teeth. The Public Advocate's sole job will be to make sure San Franciscans are getting fairly treated by our government. New York's had a Public Advocate in office for more than two decades. In just the last few years, the Public Advocate has saved more than 20 times the taxpayer money that it cost to run the office. And I can go into how they did that. But really, the Public Advocate is a truly independent agency. Right now you've got most of the departments are run by the mayor's office, the supervisors are in office, but they have a broad responsibility. No one has sort of the sole independent job to answer citizen complaints when they're getting uh, falling through the cracks in the rest of the bureaucracy and to shine the spotlight when Muni or Department of Public Works or other departments are wasting our money or not solving problems. That will be the public advocate's job if we pass Prop H. Thank you. Mercy? Yes, thank you for having us again. Um, I think uh, John mentioned what I was going to mention. Number one, yes indeed, we are creating a whole new department. We already have um, all kinds of departments, all kinds of bureaucracies, all kinds of things that take care of things that fall through the cracks. And so it seems like a creating a whole new level of government, a shadow government, is not to our interest. Uh, yes, indeed, New York has had a public advocate. The interesting part is that the newspapers are full of indications that this public advocate is completely dysfunctional and has created more problems than she's worth. And also, now there's an outcry to remove the office of the public advocate for the simple reason that is simply useless. Uh, we are against this because, one, the government is way too big already, 30,000 employees. Two, 9.6 billion in budget. We want more. No, just simply not acceptable. Thank you, Marcy. We're going to start with some questions, and the first question is going to go first to Marcy. And that is, what function will the public advocates serve that is not or cannot be accomplished by other city departments? 
in my own opinion, there is no function. I think one of the supervisors mentioned that this will be a completely superfluous layer on top of what we have right now. And so it's not like the Board of Supervisors are totally in favor of this. There are those who are saying, why are we creating a new layer when we already have all these things? We have, you know, gazillions of boards, many commissions. What are they doing? Why aren't we holding these people accountable? Same question to you. Sure. Well, I mean, the reason that independent groups like the League of Women Voters are supporting Prop H is that San Francisco City Hall is not working right now. We have spent $3 billion more in the budget in the last three years. Are you getting $3 billion more out of your government? No one's really f squeezing the departments to make sure the job gets done. Marcy says there's no uh, examples. Here's one, Airbnb. There are right now 11,000 Airbnb units being rented in San Francisco. Um, 1,600 of them are actually licensed under the law. The other 10,600, uh, 400 are illegal. We called the Airbnb office every day last week. They didn't even answer the phone, the office that the mayor set up to enforce that law. They're not doing the job. No one's really making sure that when the problems that force San Franciscans out of their homes, um, and I could go down the list, are not getting solved, uh, that we put the spotlight on the agency and force them to do their job. So I think Marcy and I actually agree the government should be working. The question is how to get there. And we say it is broken, so let's fix it. Prop H will not solve every problem, but it will certainly help. Thank you, John. Uh, second question, and we're going to start with you, is given the price tag, which is estimated to be between 2.8 and 3.5 million annually. Do we feel that the public advocate is a good value for the city? Sure, well first I would point out that the real opponents, and the Libertarian Party I think is ideologically opposed to really most measures on the ballot, and this is one, and I respect that, but the real opponents to the, this measure are the real estate industry, Airbnb, the mayor's office, and others who like things the way they are now. The price tag um, of what's on the ballot, the 24 measures, is a billion dollars. The only ones that, that these opponents are opposing, most of them, not Marcy, but most of them, are the ones like Prop H that would scrutinize how they're going to spend that billion dollars. This would cost less than one half of one percent of what is being proposed for the ballot this November on an array of measures. Why not spend a little bit of money to make sure the rest is getting spent properly? And I would push back on the cost. The actual cost of passing Prop H is between 600 and 800,000 a year, according to the controller. It only creates four jobs, the public advocate, a deputy, and two assistants. Sure, someday if the office grows to maybe do the full extent of what we can envision, it will cost more money, that's true. But as in New York, here it will save in the end if they do the job, and they surely will. Same question to you, Marcy. Yeah, um, it, it would seem to me that I have never in my life seen a government program of any kind that did not expand. And this is the reason why the Libertarian Party, as John mentioned, is uh, saying no to most things because it's an expansion of government that is not providing good value by any means. And so I would say, I have a better solution, we have a better solution, than to create a new layer. We just simply need to hold what we have accountable. Why are we doing this? Why are we not performing our own duties as voters, as people who are going to benefit from good services? Why are we supporting a dysfunctional government that is governing by ballot measures, who is saying, well, we can't agree on anything, and therefore we're going to put ballot measures, and the voters are going to have to decide. We don't want to decide anything. Well, it's up to us voters to go out there and say, hey, you guys, you're not performing. You know, per we need to do it. We don't need it. Uh, by the way, it is not just 800,000. 800,000 is just the beginning. The, the ballot, it's, the proposition itself, allows for 22 no, it people. it does not. Well, you want to read it? I did. <laughs> so it would seem if the controller says we are going to reach 3.5 million, we're going to reach 3.5 million because that is the nature of government. Thank you, Marcy. We're going to have closing statements sure. now, and we'll start with you, John. Sure. Now, Prop H is supported by a broad array of groups, the Legal Women Voters, the Coalition for San Francisco Neighborhoods, the San Francisco Democratic Party. Um, these are groups that really want to make sure San Francisco government works 
the way it's supposed to and spends its dollars wisely. You know, we talked about Airbnb being something that's caused, in part caused the eviction crisis, the housing crisis, and uh, we need someone to really make sure the city's doing its job to enforce that law and others. Muni's another. So the public advocate would really have three jobs. One, information, to make sure that people get the information about how city government's working and know where, what we need to fix. Investigation, when citizen complaints to 311 or to the supervisors, directly to agencies don't get resolved, which happens every day. They have nowhere else to turn currently. Who are they gonna call, Marcy or me? No, they're gonna either give up or bang their head against the wall and keep calling the same agency that didn't help them in the first place. As in New York, and there is no public outcry to get rid of the office in New York, the last public advocate was so popular, he became the mayor of New York, Bill de Blasio. So the public advocate would be a court of appeal that people could go to. And lastly, legislation, if need be, the public advocate could introduce legislation to solve a problem. But really, its powers are to scrutinize government, to squeeze the dollars to make sure they're getting spent, and to be a place that citizens, citizens can go for relief if they're not getting it anywhere else in San Francisco. Thank you, John. Closing statement, Marcy. Yeah. My question would be, why are we voters, you and me and everybody in the room, allowing a dysfunctional government that is governing by ballot measures, by putting things on the ballot simply for the fact of acquiring power, shifting power from the mayor, to, from the board of supervisors into interest groups? And why are we micromanaging to the point that we need to expand government exponentially in order to take care of all the micromanagement that we are imposing? Uh, we have a saying in the Libertarian Party that government at all levels has a habit of creating a problem and then putting legislation upon legislation to solve that problem. And this is a perfect example. We create problems such as, for instance, a dysfunctional government that we, the people, have elected. And then we create legislation to solve that problem. I say, go back. Start from scratch. You know, threaten every single official to kick them out of office until they behave. And I would say that would be a duty of voters rather than be creating more stuff in hopes of shifting power for public interests. Thank you, Marcy. And thank you both for your comments and for your time. We hope that this discussion has been informative. For more information on this and other ballot measures in this year's election, please visit the San Francisco Elections website at sfelections.org. Remember, early voting is available at City Hall Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. You can also vote at City Hall on the two weekends before Election Day. And if you don't vote early, be sure to vote on Tuesday, November 8th.